Hey guys, I hope you're all okay. Anna here. I hope you've been enjoying the sun, but remember changed to wear some Factor 50 and been working really hard. Oh, hardly be working, am I right? <laughs> I can't hear you, this is pre-recorded. Anyway, so welcome back to our third and final week in our In My Opinion series. To recap, we have week one, we talked about how we should choose words that help encourage uh, each other and not to her. And then in week two, we spoke about using kindness and love for when we speak up. This week's title is that there's more to others than just our opinion of them. Hmm. So to start off, I'm going to ask you a question. Does your school have cliques? If you don't know what a clique is, here is a clip from Mean Girls to help explain. Here, this map is gonna be your guide to North Shore. Now, where you sit in the cafeteria is crucial because you got everybody there. You got your freshmen, ROTC guys, preps, JV jocks, Asian nerds, cool Asians, varsity jocks, unfriendly black hotties, girls who eat their feelings, girls who don't eat anything, desperate wannabes, burnouts, sexually active band geeks, the greatest people you will ever meet, and the worst. Beware of the plastic. Well, you may get along with the people that are your immediate friend group at school. You might have a strong opinion about other groups in your school that are quite different to you, the other cliques. Like in my school, we had a popular group, we had a musical theatre group, we had the sports team group, we had the maths club group, that's right. We had the clutch of the flag team, that's also right. But these are very different groups, but they have very different vibes. And like you'd have different expectations and assumptions about each group. You'd make an assumption about who they are and what they are like uh, without actually knowing them. Have you ever interacted with someone from a different clique that really surprised you um, and made you think, actually, no, they're not who I originally thought they were? Now, it's not just in school that you can be caught out by judging a book by its cover. A classic example of this is Susan Boyle. She was a contestant on Britain's Got Talent a while ago, um, but she came out and everybody made a snap judgment about what she kind of looked like and expected her to not have any talent. And, well, here's how it goes. Hi, what's your name, darling? My name is Susan Boyle. OK, uh, Susan, and where are you from? I am from Blackburn, near Bathgate, West Lothian. It's a big town. It's a sort of collection of... It's a collection of... Uh, villages. I to think there. And how old are you, Susan? I am 47. And that's just one side of me. Okay. <laughs> okay, what's the dream? I, I'm trying to be a professional singer. And why hasn't it worked out so far, Susan? Well, I've never been given the chance before, but he's hoping it'll change. Okay, and who would you like to be as successful as? Elaine Page. Elaine like Page. That. What are you going to sing tonight? I'm going to sing I Dreamed a Dream from the Miserables. OK. Big song. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Yeah. I dreamed a dream in time gone by
Susan Piers. Without a doubt, that was the biggest surprise I have had in three years on this show. When you stood there with that cheeky grin and said, I, I want to be like Elaine Page, everyone was laughing at you. No one is laughing now. That was stunning, an incredible performance. Amazing. I'm reeling from shock about you two, but... I am so thrilled because I know that everybody was against you. I honestly think that we were all being very cynical and I think that's the biggest wake-up call ever. And I just want to say that it was a complete privilege listening to that. It was instant brilliant. Susan, I knew the minute you walked out... <laughs> oh, Simon! On that stage, <laughs> that we were going to hear something <laughs> extraordinary, and I was right. <laughs> Not a lot of touch. Susan, you are a little tiger, aren't you? Oh, I don't know about that. You are. I don't know about that. Okay, moment of truth. Piers, yes or no? The biggest yes I have ever given anybody. <laughs> Amanda? Yes, definitely. That's brilliant. Amanda, you too! Susan Boyle, you can go back to the village with your head held high. It's three S's. Yeah. opinions of our people. But if it's a quick judgment about what we think is true about them, it can become our view of who they are. You've probably made assumptions about kids at your school or even kids here at church. Our opinions can come from, like past experiences we've had with them, assumptions we've made about them because about what they wear, gossip we've heard, who they hang around with, or just because of our own insecurities or jealousy maybe. When it comes to people we don't know or understand, we tend to let our judgments and opinions affect how we view them. We can put them in our own little box to try and make sense of them, maybe. But when we judge someone negatively, it can mean we probably won't give them the chance in the future. In our mind, we already know who they are. When we do this, we aren't seeing the whole story. We're not seeing the whole person. So we're going to crack open our Bibles or phones, Bible apps, if you've either got your Bible or your Bible app. Any will do. Um, we're going to look at John 8 today. So in this passage in the book of John, we read that there are these religious leaders at the time that are asking Jesus how they should treat a woman who has committed adultery. In John 8, 4-5, the leaders believe that he would say 
to follow the law that Moses set out and to stone her. But here's how it went. So they said, Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? And the religious leaders kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and said, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote it in the dust. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Did even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. I think during this day and age, in like this kind of cancel culture that we have, we're so quick to blame and shame other people for things that they are doing wrong before even seeing that we could be doing it ourselves. Like the religious leaders, we tend to see others much differently from how we see ourselves. And we let our judgments and opinions define who others are. And we slowly separate ourselves from them and move away from it, like getting on our high horse about it. But in response to the religious leaders, Jesus challenged them to look inward at themselves and at their own sin instead of judging this woman. And if any of them were without sin, then they could throw the first stone, it said in John 8, 7 to 8. The leader's argument was just shut down and they just slowly left the scene because that's all they could do. They couldn't say anything. They are not without sin. And they just leave Jesus standing with this woman. Jesus knew the woman's whole story and he loved her regardless and didn't judge or condemn her. There was more to everyone in this story than the initial judgments and opinions that were formed. Nobody knew the full story and nobody knows the full story apart from God. And we all need God's forgiveness. And there's much more to each of us than just the assumptions that we have. Jesus calls us to remember that there's more to others than just our opinion of them. This teaching of not judging people straight away without checking ourselves can be seen again in Matthew 7, 3, where it says, Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to help remove the speck from your brother's eye. Jesus teaches us to try and remember that there is more to others than just our opinion of them. To check ourselves before condemning someone else. To never be too quick to judge. And to remove the judgment and remember that everyone is made in God's image and is deserving of his love and his grace. Because we all sin. So we should show grace and love to one another. And to love our neighbour as ourselves and treat others as we want to be treated. And so remember, there is more to others than just our opinion of them. Take care and have a great week.